Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and in today's video, I'm going to be working with this nice sheet of new acrylic to replace some old and outdated acrylic electrical panels. I'm using this dual tone acrylic and that's because the original electrical panels off the sailboat are also dual tone. These are clear on the back side because these are back illuminated. That way at nighttime, all of the switch labels light up. The client also supplied a nice PDF drawing of the outline and all of the engraving that I need to do. Now I wish I could just plop that PDF file into Lightburn software and just hit send out to the laser. But when I took a look at the file in detail, I saw that a lot of the edges, especially on the text, were very jagged and it's just not going to make a very good file. So before I go over to the laser machine, I'm gonna show you what I did to clean up that file to make sure that everything is clean and crisp and the client gets all the detail that they need on these panels. Inside the Lightburn software, I've already imported the PDF file now, because that PDF file shows up as an image in Lightburn software, that can only be engraved. And of course, on these panels, there's holes that need to be cut out for the mounting and buttons and switches. So I went and used the trace function within the Lightburn software, and that's what I have on the screen before us right now. Right now, it doesn't look too bad until I start to zoom in on some of the text and it doesn't really look all that good. And that's because the PDF file that I was supplied was fairly low resolution. And this is the results that I get. And I did play around with the trace function settings quite a bit. And this is just still kind of what it comes back to. I'll pan over a little bit too. And we'll even see that the circle cutouts aren't perfectly round. They've got square edges on it. And this is nothing that I would ever engrave and then charge a customer for. So to get around this, the quickest, easiest thing that I could think to do is just to redraw within Lightburn over the top of the text and all of these features. And because I'm drawing these new objects within Lightburn software, I now have the option to either engrave them or cut them out. And I'm not gonna take you through step-by-step step on that. Instead, I'm going to pan the screen up and we'll see that I've already done that. I'll move the panel that I drew directly over the top of the one that was a trace image and I'll zoom in and we'll see that everything lines up just about perfectly. So this is going to work out very good for this application. And now I wanna take out that original tracing. I just wanna move that off to the side. So I'm going to highlight that here and press and hold shift and that will highlight or select just that one layer. And I can grab that and move that off to the side. And now when I zoom in, we'll see that we have all these beautiful, clean, crisp lines for either the cutout or the engraving. And this is now ready to go over to the laser machine. I've got a smaller panel that I'm doing right here. It's the exact same thing. I just import that, I find the best trace settings and then I just redraw over the tops of those. And I do realize that this does take a little bit of time, but rather than work in an editing software with the PDF file for upwards of an hour, maybe 45 minutes, this panel that we see here took me less than 10 minutes to redraw it out manually, and the smaller panel even less than that at around five minutes. So for me, that was time well spent. With the light burn, uh, file here all set up. We're ready to head over to my Blue Dream designed by Russ. This is a machine that is carried by CloudRay. It is a 70 watt CO2 laser machine. There's two things I want to make sure that I've got set in the machine work area before I place the work material in there. The first thing that I set up is making sure that the honeycomb is clean. You can see that there's some staining from some previous projects, but prior to this project, I did clean this using LA's Totally Awesome. This is one of the best products that I've seen that'll just melt away any of this residue that's on the honeycomb. 
And it's very important that there's no residue that can start on fire on this honeycomb because when we go to do the cutout of the acrylic, that fire that can start on the honeycomb will mark the bottom side of the acrylic. And just general house cleaning, it is good to clean this honeycomb because this is where a lot of fires start in the work area. So we wanna have that clean and not have any issues. The other thing that we'll see is I do have some magnets placed around in the work bed area. And that is because I'm going to space the acrylic sheet up off this honeycomb. If I left the acrylic directly on there, when I cut through, when the laser hits the metal parts of the honeycomb, that laser reflection is going to reflect to the underside of the acrylic, marking and scoring it. It also allows an extra air gap for any of the smoke residue from the cutouts to quickly be evacuated out of the area versus color staining the bottom side of the acrylic. One of the tricks that I found with working with engraving acrylic is sometimes that engraving dust will re-adhere to the top surface. An easy way to get around that is to just take some regular dish soap and put a little drizzle across the top. And with a nice foam brush, I'm just going to do a nice even wipe. So I've got an even coating all the way across the top of the surface. And what this is going to do is any of that engraving dust coming up is going to stick to the soap and not back onto the acrylic. It's something that I picked up and I've been using it ever since. And the really neat thing about this is the soap doesn't have to stay wet. It can be wet or it can be dry. Most of the time it will end up drying out because I run my air assist at about half to one quarter the airflow that I would normally use. I'll just make sure that I've got a nice even coating, making sure I don't go too fast to put too many bubbles on this top surface. And by the way, I do have the protective film that is on the, uh, the acrylic, the top and the bottom. I do have that peeled back. I've experimented with it on, with it off. It all depends on the manufacturer and because I use different manufacturers of acrylic, I just know that with the best consistency, I just roll it back and I always know what to expect. Inside light burn, we'll see that I've got this flipped on its side. So now it's standing up on end. And this is just so that I can make best use of the work material. And the settings that I use for the engraving is a speed of 125 millimeters per second, a power level of 15%. When I do the cutout, I'm going to go at a speed of 12 millimeters per second at a power level of 40%. These are the settings that I found work best on my particular machine. Again, I have a 70 watt CO2 laser machine. This is the Blue Dream designed by Russ that's carried by Cloudray. I've got everything all set and I'm ready to hit the start button. first large panel is all complete and everything looks really good on it. I was checking it out and when I flipped it over to the other side, I do realize that everything is mirrored on it, but I kind of like the way that this looks. The entire surface is nice and smooth and I think the lettering turns out a little bit better versus having the uh, black acrylic side facing out and then having the little ridges from the engraving. So. Uh, off camera, I re-ran this again, only I mirrored the image and I'll let the client, I also know the guy pretty well, so I don't mind doing the extra work, but I'll let him decide which version he likes better. On the computer screen here, I've got the smaller panel and once again, we'll see that one image is the correct way and then the other image, I mirrored it. So I still have material left over and again, I don't mind doing this for uh, the client that's also my friend. A little bit of time has passed and both sets of panels are complete, both the regular version and the mirrored version. Let's take a close up look at each set. 
Here's the first panel and absolutely everything looks flawless on here. This is the one where the engraving is on the side that's closest to the camera here. And here's the panel that I mirrored. So this is actually engraved on the back side. This front side here is totally smooth. And again, it looks very nice and everything is absolutely perfect. On the smaller panel, I have the same great results. On this one again, the engraving is facing towards the camera. And then on the mirrored version, the engraving is on the back side, so this front side is perfectly smooth. And with these smaller panels, we can take a look at them side by side. This was a great project to share with all of you just how easy it is to work with the Curlix and a CO2 laser. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Doing any number of those things really helps the channel out, but more so it's a great way to connect content like this with great viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.